On the next day, April 26th, I was sitting in my apartment and doing nothing. I was very happy that I survived the earthquake, but I was feeling very, very useless because I was not doing anything to help my countrymen who needed me the most at that time. I was going through Facebook, I was going through Twitter, and everybody, those who were in the affected areas, were posting for help. And my friends, some or the other house, they were reaching out to the people in affected areas to give helping hands. In my entire life, I never felt that useless. I felt that my postgraduate degree in computer science is going to be on waste. But let me tell you the truth, what could I have done? I am a computer engineer. All my life I have done is to hit those keys of my keyboard and nothing else. On that evening, I got a call from my friend, from Sinodara, who was working at National Information Technology Center. And he told me, Chandan, come down to Sinodara and help us build an earthquake data portal as immediately as possible. I said, I'm on my way. When I reached there, everybody was going to me. Everybody wanted that earthquake data portal to be up in no time. I, I stood there and thought to myself that this is my time. This is the opportunity which I'm going to take to make sure that I'm going to help people who are affected with the earthquake. This is my opportunity to make an impact. Now let me paint, paint you a picture of what was going on. In one hand, there were these earthquake affected areas and people. People are looking to rescue them. Some are looking for medical emergency like ambulance. Some are looking for food. Some are looking for water. And some are looking just for someone to come there and help them and get them out of the trouble. And in the other hand, there were these people, everybody, almost everybody, including the government, the organizations, the police, the armies, NGOs, INGOs, social groups, and even every individual were ready to help them. But the problem was, who is going to tell them that the problem is there? For example, if you have an ambulance and you don't know where that ambulance is needed, how are you going to reach there? There were times where people were ready with money, with cash, and wanted to contribute, but they did not know who to give it to. Because they did not know who is the genuine person who is going to take this money and help those people in need. So there was this need and there was this supply, but there was lacking a connection. So there I thought, this is my time and this is the opportunity I am going to take to find a connection, to build a platform which is going to link between this need and this supply. So I went to find where is the maximum data available where people are looking for. It was on social media platforms, Facebook and Twitter. Because remember, whenever people were in problem, in trouble, they were reaching out on Facebook, they were updating their status on Twitter, and they were writing, we are in trouble, we need ambulance, or we need this many people, we need someone to rescue us, we need food, or we need tent, and so on, and so on. So we started collecting those data. Once we collected those data, the next thing was to verify them. Because imagine a situation where someone is asking for an ambulance and then they don't actually require it. And if we decide to send an ambulance there, somebody might die on the other side because they actually need an ambulance. So we wanted to make sure that the data are genuine the data are verified and actually required. And we also have to make sure that right amount of resources are sent. Once, what happened was a person called me on my personal number. I don't know how he got my number. And he said, Chandan, we need 50 tents. Because if we are not going to get 50 tents tonight, hundreds of people are going to sleep roofless. 
I could not verify who the person was. I had no idea who that person is. I had no time to verify it. Because we hardly had any time to take decisions. So sometimes we take, took decisions on our drug. And then I told him, listen, I'm going to send you 50 tents, but Mr. make sure that even a single tent is misused. I'm going to find you and then and you're not going to like it. Because remember, in the most affected areas where people are homeless, where people are roofless, where people are almost dying, if they are not getting the resources and we are allocating those resources to someone else, this is not going to be fair. And we have to do those every decision with no time, with genuinity, and make sure that the right amount of resources will reach at the right place. Once we collected this need data, there were times where we had more than 20,000 requests not fulfilled. We had to make sure that where the resources are lying and we have to figure out. Because I was inside Singhala, all we had access was to policemen and to Arden. And thanks to the Home Ministry that they were really cooperating with us. And whenever a rescue team was needed anywhere, we used to contact some officials of government. And then they used to send the rescue people there. But what about ambulances? What about doctors? What about sanitary pads? What about food? What about water? We do not have food. But we knew that there are organizations like Red there are organizations like UN OCHA, and there are social groups, and there are individuals who are ready with these resources. So we just started reaching out to different organizations. And we told them, hey, can you do one little favor? Can you make a list of resources you have and then share it with us? Make it public where we can access it and make sure that you are operating it frequently. So every organization, including social groups and even independent developers, started sharing their resources. Okay, I have five ambulances I can send immediately. We have 50 men. We have this much of YY available. We have this much of water water bottles available. We can send doctors and this. So we built a central database system where the resources were listed. And then we used to update it frequently. And we made sure that this list of needs are connected to this list of resources. To make sure whenever somebody is needing something, we need to look into this database. We will be very careful that we have to extend it in a genuine manner because this is going to be published and people will see it. And they don't want people to question them that why are you spending this much rupees on a sugar per kg while it's available in less price on the market. And it was not just about sugar or rice, it was also about bigger investments like buying thousands, lakhs of pets, getting those ambulances and sending to those places. Now let me paint you this entire picture. Let's see this picture to what happened in a nutshell. It was time of crisis because of which when we asked government to publicize the data, they did not say no. It was time of earthquake and lives were at stake because of which when we reached out to the organizations, when we reached out to the private companies and social, social groups and people, to open up their data, to share whatever they have with us. Not say no. It was time of this crisis when everybody of us came together to help our country, to make sure that somebody is getting help out there and some of the complaints of life is being saved. Now the question is does it have to be a conflict? Does it have to be a crisis? Do we have to wait another outcry to come together to open our data, to share our data with people? There is a concept called data philanthropy. When private companies share their data for the betterment of the government and the people of the country. But we did that only when it was a time of crisis. Just imagine if everybody of us, the private companies, social groups, NGOs, INGOs, government, the data is open. There are tremendous data out there. And if the data is open, 
a possibility is limitless. We can solve development problem in a in like no time. We already are in development crisis. We already are in economic crisis. Look at this country. So the right time to open the data was yesterday. There are some initiatives already that are being taken by government and other private companies. But it is high time that all of us come together to open the data, to experience the culture of data. Because this will take our country to the next level.